standing by Chief Investment Officer and CEO, EGSI Financial. Great to see you and hope you're doing well. Wanted to see how you were feeling about the market and the economy. Well, thanks for having me back, Nicole. Um, you know, the, the markets, it's resilient. You know, it's, it's still looking and, and expecting the, the feds to lower rates. Um, I, I think inflation is going to be around for a long time. Uh, but the economy, it's not just slowing. I mean, we're seeing, based on jobs numbers, um, home sales, uh, you know, it's, it's really there's a contraction going on. But, you know, the, the big picture for us is, you know, as far as our, our clients and investing, we're really being very, very cautious. You know, we, we've got some money sitting on the sidelines um, and we're, you know, it's just a, a wait and see. Um, having said that, you know, I, there, there's going to be some opportunities and we're just really kind of biding our time to, to find those opportunities. I want to hear more. So you think that the economy is in contraction and you're using home sales and uh, labor as sort of an indicator. What, what, tell me some more things, specifics that you're watching. Yeah, you know, so when we look at the jobs numbers, you know, last year we, we saw the jobs numbers being revised down, um, you know, month after month. And then this year they revised them down for, for all of last year. We're also seeing the number of, of open positions um, also shrinking. We're seeing significant layoffs, you know, uh, across the spectrum from uh, uh, blue collar jobs all the way up to uh, professional jobs. You know, one of the things that we're also seeing, you know, from, from a home perspective, you know, you've got different regions of the country from Florida down around Cape Coral, Fort Myers, um, Arizona, Austin, you know, where there were very few homes, inventory was, was really shallow, very short. And, and now we're seeing a, a, a large inventory, prices are starting to come down. Uh, and so even with rates being lower, the inventory that we're seeing in certain areas is, is a little bit higher. Uh, than it was just a, a year ago. And so that's telling us that things are starting to slow down, um, you know, all the way across the board. Understood. Um, where do you think, you know, the Fed is headed? Are we hearing one cut? Is that sort of what you're thinking? Is that the yeah. Yeah, Nicole, honestly, we believe that they should not cut rates. Um, you, you know, they, they actually need to raise rates. As soon as they cut them, inflation is going to come roaring back. But they really don't have a choice. I mean, they've kind of painted themselves in this corner. The Fed's created the situation that we're in right now with all the quantitative easing, lowering rates as low as they did. And now everyone's kind of shocked when all these loans are coming due and the, the rates are significantly higher. And so the, the last thing that the feds can do, if they raise rates, uh, everyone keeps talking about a hard landing, it's gonna be a, a, a extremely hard landing if they raise rates. So the only thing that they can really do is, is lower rates to, to have that soft landing that they've been talking about, but it's gonna be short lived. You know, as soon as they do that, what's gonna happen is um, inflation is gonna come back. So I think really because it's a, uh, political football right now, that's what they're looking at. You know, you hate to say it, but that's that's kind of a reality. And we just continue to kick that can down the road. But ev eventually we're going to have to face it. Right. So, you know, when you started that sentence, you were talking that the Fed should not cut rates. In fact, they need to raise rates, but they really shouldn't do that either because you had concerns about that. Um, so right. the Fed should probably just stand pat is what you're saying. For, till when? That's, till the new year? I, you, you know, till till the after the election going into 2025. I mean, if they raise right, rates, right. Uh, it, it's going to be turmoil. Right. I mean, already the service on the debt is the second largest line item behind Social Security. Uh, it's going to create a, a strain on, on the banking system, uh, you know, all the way across the board uh, if they raise rates. If they lower rates, inflation is going to come roaring back. So really, uh, Holding steadfast is really the only option that they should be doing uh, right now. Um, but they're they're probably going to lower rates. Probably only one time is all I see. September, maybe um, out in November. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I see for right now. It could change, but that's all we're seeing. Right, right. So at this point now, for someone's portfolio, how should they plan the portfolio? What kind of things should be in the portfolio? No, it should be really broad and diverse. I mean, everything is based on on someone's risk. Like for us, you know, it, it, it depends on where they're at um, in their, their economic life cycle. Um, you know, how much risk can they afford to take? And if they already have cash on hand, you know, why, why not just do very safe uh, short-term treasuries? 
you know, where you're getting four and a half percent or more with with absolutely no risk. Um, and wait till we see what shakes out and then disperse that cash a little bit later on, or unless we find some really good buys. Uh, you know, there are some things out there that, that I like. I still really like Lowe's. I like industrials. Um, but, you know, a, again, you know, we're, we're very, very cautious with redeploying capital at this point. Right, understood. What about abroad? Um, do you look abroad sometimes when you're investing? And if so, what do you do there? You know what? We do. Um, I, I still like certain parts of Asia, Europe, um, not so much. I mean, when we look at the, the, the broader economic picture globally, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, struggles all around the globe, just like we're seeing here. We saw the ECB lower rates. We saw Canada lower rates. You know, a lot of central banks are already doing the uh, lowering rates and, and already starting down the, the easing uh, passes, uh, path as well. So, you know, a, again, you know, there are certain areas like India that I do like, uh, but for the most right. part, we're, again, we're just being very, very cautious. Yeah, I think Bank of England is coming up too. Ed Sedell, thank right. you, EGSI Financial. Great to see you. Thanks.